Hi, I'm Tom Lippincott, and welcome to Diatonic Triads Complete Part 3. Today we're going to be talking about the structure called 7th No 5th. I'll just do a real quick recap about my guitar here in case I have any new students. As you can see, I have eight strings. The inner six strings inside here are the same as a regular guitar, E, A, D, G, B, E. And I also uh, call these 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, and 1st strings. My two extra strings, which is a high A and a low B, are not going to factor into this class at all. We're taking a C major 7 chord to start with, which gives us the notes C, E, G, and B, or the root 3rd, 5th, and 7th of a C major 7 chord. And we're leaving out the 5th, so we've just got C, E, and B, which sounds like that if I play them as a chord. And anybody who's familiar with the concept of shell voicings, either from one of my classes or anywhere else, will have played some of these already by bringing my E on the high E string, the open string, down an octave to the fourth string, second fret, leaving the other two notes right where they are, and that'll give me these three notes next. E on the bottom, B in the middle, C on top. Next, I bring C on the second string down an octave to the fifth string, which gives me this familiar shell voicing of C major 7. So this is an important first step in getting to know uh, these three note structures all over the neck and the different uh, chord qualities, if you will, of the, you know, the different shapes for each one. We go C major 7, F major 7, B half diminished, E minor 7 is next, the, the B goes up two steps, B, C, D. major 7. Seventh is there. The E on the fourth string goes down a step to become D. And then finally that continues down to C on the A minor 7. The seventh is G. Comes down and becomes the third of uh, C major 7 going down one more step. Now on page 31, we're starting off easy by doing a cycle two. We're starting with this voicing, and we're just bringing it diatonically up. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, octave jump to A minor seven, B half diminished. Again, same shape for both minor seven and half diminished, then back to one. So here we go in close up with that one. Now if we look on page 32, we get into the melodic and harmonic minor scale. So G minor 6 coming from G melodic minor. And I just switched the different melodic minor scales kind of in this part of the neck to get the different flavor of each. So that's just an example of, of using the melodic minor scale and the different modes and sounds available from it. And again, as I mentioned earlier, these sounds are really portable because you've got these little three note structures that in a lot of cases are real easy to play and you can move them around and get the flavor of an entire scale kind of just, just a couple of those chords. The actual chords that I'm using correspond to that a lot of the time, but this very first chord it's actually a B half diminished chord. Why would I be using a B half diminished chord on C major? Well, it, it only lasts for a second, so you could maybe say, oh, it's just a approach chord. But a actual fact is, if I think of that against a C bass note, it is a B half diminished chord with no fifth, but of all the notes in a B half diminished chord, the only note that really clashes with C major is the F, the flat fifth, and I'm not playing that one. So I'm left with A, B, and D, which could actually all be notes that work well with C major 7, the 13th, this major 7th, and the 9th. So it's like two color tones and a chord tone. 
So keep in mind that any of these voicings has multiple uses in many cases. If you want to use it as the one chord in a major key, just look for the voicings that do not have the natural fourth in them, and most of the time th those voicings will work great as the one chord. Um. <music>